Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. So I had these uh, LCD displays uh, laying around for quite some time. I got them for free, like a year or two ago I think. Probably closer to two years. So this is a 20 by 4 display and this is another one but it's a little bit smaller. It should also be 20 by 4 I think. And I got the, the typical uh, 16 by 2 got a lot of these. So I was shopping like uh, one and a half weeks ago and bought one of these so I can do some testing. Mainly I want to figure out the values of conductors. So I bought this one and while I was there I saw the Raspberry Pi and it was like 6 euros. So it hit me. Why don't I buy one of these and learn to program it and uh, make it talk to display. And why would I do that? Well, back in the day, we bought these small ones for uh, about less than 10 euros. We have hooked them up to the parallel port and then uh, my friends wrote a program for Linux. So he displayed like uh, the hardware, uh, how much space they had on the drive, temperatures, things like that. So I figure I wanted to do something similar, but I figure with the Pi, I could control this, and with the Pi I could also control some fans, so I could actually build a very nice fan controller, I figured, for one of my machines. So that is kind of the plan. Not having used these before, I tried to figure out as much as I could, reading up on the Pi and Python, like find different example codes and things like that. So what I want to do first obviously is try to make the, the Pico right to the display and if I can solve that I want uh, the Pico to read some fan RPMs and uh, once you have fan reading and you can see some see that on the display I would like it to be able to control the fan and after that I think uh, I want it to also read some temperature sensors, so I bought some NTC thermistors, so we can basically make like a voltage divider with that. And if we have that, we can also not only have fan control through manual settings like where you select some kind of arbitrary speed, but you could also have the Pico set the fan speed based on temperature. So basically what I want to do is build a fan controller. Now that can use the display to display information about the fan, RPM, temperature. We have some buttons somewhere here or here where you can select parameters like manual speeds, automatic speeds, things like that. So that is the project to design a glorified 20 by 4 uh, fan controller. And this thing is for reference is pretty much exactly as wide as an optical unit or a 525 bay and about one and a half, maybe even taller. So it's gonna take up to 525 base. Uh, but I have a very scrappy case that misses missing a lot of parts and don't have the original front base and stuff. So I think that's perfect candidate for a mod like this. Just a trash case. So we can pimp it a little bit, I think. So yeah, I think the next thing we're gonna do is build uh, all of this on a prototype uh, lab board. I'm going to use mostly what I have at home because I have no budgets for anything right now. It's, I bought the Pico and bought some thermistors, but uh, whatever I need otherwise is uh, gonna be what I have at home. So it's not gonna be like a perfect design, the optimal components. It's just gonna be what I have. I have to work with that because I have no budget right now. So with that in mind and the fact that I never coded anything in Python or not really a programmer at all, Gonna have to learn Python, gonna have to figure out how to design hardware with what I have. Keep that in mind. This is basically gonna be like a prototype uh, learning experience. I'm gonna put links to everything I do. If I borrow code or, you know, where I found information, programs I make for this, schematics, so on. But uh, do remember that this is just like a prototype DIY project. It's uh, nothing professional or anything like that at all. It's just. Just a little bit of fun and uh, yeah, I want to see how fun I can have with six years worth of hardware. So let's get into it. 
The first thing I did was to hook up the backlight to the lab power supply. Next we want to add ground to our Pico, so using pin 38 for that. We're also using pin 3 that we're gonna use for the LCD but also for our trim put that we're adding. And the potentiometer will be used for adjusting the contrast of the LCD later. We're adding a red wire here for the 5 volt from the Pico to the trim put and it's also later gonna go to our display. Now I'm connecting ground to pin 1 on the LCD, so that's pin VSS. Next we're hooking up a wire between the trim put and the LCD. It's pin number 3 called VO and it's for the contrast. We also need to hook up 5 volts to the LCD, so we're gonna take that from the trim put and uh, connect it to pin 2 on the LCD called VDD. We are connecting pin 1 on the Pico with pin 4 on the LCD that is register select so you can either send data or instructions to the LCD. We are connecting pin 2 on the Pico to the enable pin on the LCD so you can send data and instructions. We are grounding pin 5 on the LCD. It's the read write pin and we only want to write and reading would actually send 5 volts to the Pico and probably fry it so that's why it's important it's grounded. Now we're gonna hook up the LCD's data bus to the Pico. We're gonna use pins 4 to 7 on the Pico and 9 to 12. And then on the LCD we're gonna use pin 7 to 14. And we can actually use only pin 11 and 14. Most libraries and code only uses the 4-bit mode of the LCD. My testing code uses 8 bits and it's really not that much work adding all the 8 bits. But the first four bits are actually optional, depending on how you want the LCD to operate. Now we can power up the Pico and try to write to display. I did try some open source software that I wanted to use, but uh, it seems like the display wasn't working and uh, we will get to the problem of that later, but I ended up writing my own software, very simple software to try the display out. We can clearly see that my test software is working, so I decided to load up a, an example I found on the internet. And now when I look closer at the LCD, I can actually see that the LCD is working. It's just very dim and I don't know why. Now I'm gonna add a button. It's gonna be very useful to interact with the display for testing purposes, but also later to control the fans. The button is hooked up on pin 5, that is the trip on 3 volt rail on the Pico, to pin 20 on the Pico. I have programmed the Pico to clear the display if I push the button. This is useful for testing. The display is 4 lines by 20 physically, but it's actually addressed as 2 lines by 40. And I figured out that if the display was running in 2 line mode, then it got dim. I don't have the actual documentation for this LCD, it's so old it doesn't seem to exist, and uh, even the manufacturer doesn't have it if I search for it on their page. But I have some other documentations for similar LCDs from them and it actually seems like the backlight should be negative and the total voltage 6.6. .6. I decided to try that to see what happened. I did not have a negative voltage source for the contrast so I fed the whole display 6.6 .6 volts. And uh, that's always not uh, ideal but it shows that it works.
I did figure out that this LCD probably needs negative voltage on the contrast pin because some of the other models that I have from this manufacturer do require that. And uh, like I said, I can't buy anything for this project. You have to use what I have at home. So there are much nicer circuits you could get, components you can get to get the negative voltage. Uh, but I had to use my trusty triple five timers, some diodes and some caps and a center to generate 2.7 volts. That was the lowest I could, uh, could go lower if I put another diode in series there because we need like 1.6 to 1.8 negative. And then we can, with five volts, we're gonna get our 6.6 .6 to 6.8 max for our uh, contrast. I decided to minimize number of components. I didn't use any diodes or resistors. Instead, we're just using the potentiometer to lower our negative around 2.4 that I measured to negative 1.6. Now we want to try to read the fan RPM and to do that you need to send a voltage to the pin to the actual RPM signal pin of the fan and you don't want to have uh, unlimited current so you're gonna use a resistor in this case I use a 2.2k resistor but I'm later gonna change that to an 820 can even go 680 I think because it's based on the voltage and since I'm using 3.3 volt here instead of 12 that you might normally use since your fan runs off that I don't need that big of a resistor and then when the fan's halo sensors basically triggers it will pull uh, the signal to ground so it will pull it down so every time the fan uh, records half an rpm because it does this twice per revolution it will pull uh, the 3.3 signal down to ground and the uh, GPIO pin on the Pico will be able to pick that up if we probe it. I did some research and it seems that interrupts is the way to go on how to read say a fan so that's what I decided to try out and see if that would pick up the fan signal. And as you can see that seems to be working. Now to get some useful RPM readings out of the Pico. I was going to use a piece of example code I found but it was written for the Raspberry Pi. And that thing has a real time clock and the Pico seems not to have one. So you have to ha use uh, tick rate instead. So it's like a relative time that has passed you can figure out. But that by itself seems to be pretty buggy. So I had a lot of problem with this code. But I uh, rewrote 9% of the code and got something useful out of it. That we can use to measure the RPM. As you can see we can uh, record the RPM. And if I slow down a fan with my thumb it records a lower RPM. I hooked up the oscilloscope to the fan's RPM cable and we can see here we've got a nice square wave. So every re revolution of the fan is uh, two RPM signals and we got 47 Hertz here. So that's uh, 23 and a half revolutions uh, per second. So you take that time 60, we get about 1400 RPMs. So the readings we're getting from the Pico adds up. Next, we would like to control the fan. So for that, we need to build a circuit. And I very early on decided I want to use the PVM functionality of the Pico to basically turn a transistor on and off. And you can decide how long it's basically on. So I say 10% on or 100% on. I also decided not to take any like voltage measurement or have any form of feedback. So it's pretty dumb. So depending on how much current the fan draws, the voltage will differ even at the same duty cycle between fans but it's, it's a very easy solution to get some volt, some RPM control and I decided that uh, simple is better in this case since it's a prototype so I did know the limitations here I later did replace the transistor to the right with a more powerful uh, model a B 
SPD140 because it was running quite hot. Uh, the way the transistors work is the hotter they get, the more current they actually draw, so therefore the hotter they get, so you can get thermal runaway. Then, like I said before, I had to use the component I had at home, so I didn't have like like good MOSFETs or ideal transistors or anything. So this was what I had in one of those universal kits with transistors. Another problem with this design was that uh, the fan doesn't run until it gets a PVM signal. So that's not particularly fail safe, but uh, it would have to do for this uh, prototype fan controller. But as you can see, the fan is controllable using the button here, so we can set, set different speeds. We can see here that the fan RPM is increasing when I'm increasing the speed setting using the button. Next we would like to read the temperature, so for that we need a 10k resistor in series with a 10k NTC thermistor. And we're gonna feed the resistor 3.3 volt and then ground the thermistor and in between them we have our divided voltage that we can then convert using one of the ADC pins on the Pico. And some clever code I found on the internet. It's a little bit slow so we're only gonna run it occasionally. It's one of the heaviest pieces of code in the whole program for a fan controller because there's a lot of math involved and I think because Python is an interpreted language. It uh, gets quite bogged down on the CPU. Now I added some code to tie the temperature sensor code to the fan controller code so you can actually have the temperature just dictate the fan RPM. I'm using my hot air station here to increase the temperature of the thermistor. We can also see the voltage changing on the fan as the RPM goes up and down with the temperature. I duplicated the fan circuitry, so we have a second fan now, and also label them the way I want them. And I have added manual and automatic profiles that I can cycle through with two buttons now, so I added a second button. MS stands for manual speed, and A40 stands for automatic, and full speed at 40 centigrades. Because I had two ADC pins left on the Pico, and I already had 5 and 12 volts coming in, from the power supply, I figured we could use that to measure the voltage from the power supply using two voltage dividers, just like we did with the thermistor, but we use two fixed resistors instead. You could use them instead to measure the voltage going to the fans and set the duty cycle according to the voltage, which would be a much more clever solution to controlling the fans, but I think I saved that for like a version 2.0 of, uh, of the fan controller. I changed the incoming voltages and the Pico did pick that up. This is the code up to this point. It's going to change a lot, uh, but it, it's working well enough that I can actually build the fan controller now and uh, sort out any minor issues with the code later. But like I said, I'm a shit programmer, so it's kind of shitty code. It's time to assemble the fan controller. I have added a circuit diagram in the top right corner that matches the PCB and the components. So you can use that to see what we're adding, the values, and how it's all connected. The circuit diagram and the schematics will be available in the description so you can download them yourself. I started by adding the BD140 transistors to the heatsink using some thermal pads. The thermal pads will also serve as an insulator between the heatsink and the transistor. I used a piece of uh, thicker paper under the heatsink to give uh, some spacing between the PCB and the heatsink just in case the heatsink would uh, short something out. The heatsink is uh, anodized so it's normally not conductive on the surface but uh, all of that is required is a scratch.
These are the two BD140 transistors that we will control with the Pico to regulate the amount of voltage going to the fans. Next up is a socket for the triple five timer. I removed a floppy connector from our dead graphics card and we're gonna use it to supply power to the fan controller. Next we're gonna solder what essentially gonna be the socket for the Pico in place. The LCD already has male pin connector soldered to it from factory, so I'm gonna add some female ones to the fan controller because I do want everything to be removable and detachable. I'm just using a pen here to get the proper spacing and the pins aligned. Everything is so much easier if you can separate the circuit boards. I'm adding the 10k trim put for the contrast. I'm also adding the header for the NTC thermistor for our temperature readings. Now it's time to add the fan headers. The rightmost one I put a little bit further away from the hole 
because I want the screw there later and it won't fit otherwise. Next I want to connect the LCD to the Pico so we can control it. I'm removing the pads between the LCD pads and the Pico's pads because we're gonna bend some wires over them and I don't want solder bridges between the wires. Here I have done bit uh, 4 to 7 on the right already and we're doing bit 0 to 3. Bit 0 to 3 is optional in 4 bit mode which we will be running but some of my code run 8 bit. So might as well add all the 8 bits, it's not that much extra work. Here I'm just adding ground to the LCD. I'm also making sure pin 5 is grounded, so I'm tying it to pin 1 on the LCD here. I'm tying all the grounds on the Pico together in a, like a network so I have easy access to ground all over. I'm adding the first 10k resistor to the bottom right voltage regulator for the fan. I'm using the legs of the resistor to tie it to the transistor. I'm using a pair of tweezers to help me bend the, the wire around it. I'm adding a 2.2k resistor to the bottom voltage regulator. I'm adding the last resistor for the bottom voltage regulator. It's rated at 18k and it's uh, the one between the Pico and the first transistor, the BC547. Now we're adding the BC547 transistor that the Pico is controlling and this transistor will control the bigger BD140.
I'm gonna spend some time now hooking up the different components using what's left of the legs from other components. All the transistors and resistors for the voltage regulators are now in place and I think we're looking pretty good. Both 100 microfarad capacitors was added to the regulators for the incoming 12 volts. Now I'm just adding another 10k resistor that will be used with the NTC thermistor for the temperature readings. I'm adding a 10 microfarad capacitor to the 3.3 volt rail on the Pico. I found that my voltage was uh, a lot more stable if I did that. I'm adding a 100 microfarad capacitor for the supply voltage to the Pico. I'm also adding a 47 microfarad capacitor used for the contrast. I'm adding a 3.3k resistor for a 12 volt divider so we can measure the 12 volt rail from the power supply. I'm adding the 22k resistor for the 12 volt divider. This is the 12 
K resistor for the 5 volt divider, so we can measure the 5 volt coming from the power supply. This is the second and last resistor for the 5 volt divider and it's rated at 22K. Now we're adding the first out of two resistors for the triple five timer and it's rated at 10K. And now we're putting in the second one and it's rated at 2.2K. Next we are installing a 100 nanofarad capacitor between ground and VCC and the triple 5 timer for filtering. This is a 1 nanofarad capacitor for a triple 5 timer. We are installing the first out of two 47 microfarad capacitors that are used in conjunction with two diodes to generate the negative voltage. And now we're putting both 1N407 diodes. And we're installing the second and last 47 microfarad capacitor for the triple five timers negative voltage generation. We are now installing a 100 microfarad capacitor for the pump and a 470 microfarad capacitor for one of the fans. I figured some filtering for a pump would be a good idea. I'm not sure how much ripple it might, might cause and how that might spread. Also, the outgoing signal from the BD140 is a square wave with the same duty cycle as the incoming signal that comes from the Pi to the BC547. So I decided I want to smooth that out with some 470 microfarad caps that will give you an average voltage instead of say 12 volt and then nothing. But uh, could technically run the fans and I did try that with just 12 volt going on and off. We are adding the center diode here to limit uh, the negative voltage to minus 2.7 just in case so we don't get too high of voltage. The sin is rated at 500 milliamps and there's only a few milliamps going through it, so it should be fine. The backlight needs uh, around 4.2 volts, so what I'm doing is adding a diode to create a voltage drop from around 5 to just over 4 volts for the backlight. We are also adding 3 resistors for the RPM signals and they are rated at 820 ohms and needs to be at least 680 for a 3.3 volt signal that we're gonna use from the Pico. All the components are on the PCB so we can actually move on and start adding some wires at the back side that I couldn't do before that uh, needs to be insulated wire. This is for the 3.3 volt going from the Pico to the header for the buttons so you can actually change the fan settings. I have added a few more wires making sure that we have power coming in from the floppy connector to the different parts of the PCB. I'm hooking up uh, one of the voltage regulators to one of the fan headers. 
this should be one of the RPM signals coming from one of the fang headers. This should also be another fan RPM signal wire. I forgot a couple of ground wires so they were added off camera but otherwise we're more or less finished. It's time to do some basic testing here so I'm hooking up a floppy connector from a PC power supply. I'm hooking up a delta fan to the pump header so we can try that out first see if that has 12 volts and it has we got fan spin. So now I'm gonna try out one of the fan, uh, the regulated fan uh, connectors. And I'm hooking up a pin here that goes to the BC547 transistor. And all you have to do is basically touch the end of the wire. And if you connect it to 5 volts, you get full fan speed. So now I'm gonna do the same to the second one move the fan to the other fan header, move the wire, and Touching the 5 volts, we're getting the fan running at full speed. Next, we're gonna test out the triple 5 timer and make sure it works. And I'm measuring between ground here and the negative output. I've got negative 2.33 volts, so that's fine. Now we're measuring between ground and after the trim put on the contrast pin. I've got minus 1.69, so that is fine. And then we're going to measure between 5 volts and the negative contrast pin and we got 6.8 volts, so that's fine. Now we need to make the PCB with the two push buttons so we can actually control the fan speeds and settings. Now we need to add some wires for the backlight of the LCD and we're gonna add uh, the positive one after the third diode we installed for the voltage drop that it provides. And we need to solder the thermistor to our wire so we can actually place it somewhere suitable. It's time to assemble all the components and see how they fit together. I think it looks pretty good, but we do need some support between the LCD and the fan controller PCB.
before we do anything else, we need to test it. And I did test it once before and it didn't work. And I pretty quickly realized I forgot to enable wire between the Pico and the LCD. So this is the second attempt I soldered the wire in place. And last time all I got was two square lines. But uh, yeah, this time we're getting something on the LCD. And fans are spinning and running. And it seems to actually be working properly this time. Let's progress. I decided now that it's working that I want to put some uh, hot snot on uh, wires that might get damaged or lose uh, if you touch them by mistake. So I'm gonna use uh, the hot glue gun obviously and then some hot air to melt that glue. It's a trick I pick up on Louis Rossman's channel. Next, I want some way of screwing the fan controller PCB to the LCD's PCB. So I added some uh, motherboard standoffs. I'm gonna foxy glue them to the PCB. They have some insulation put on the bottom of them just in case. Now that the epoxy is cured, we can remove the fan controller and uh, have a look. I think it looks pretty good, even if the hardware design and the software isn't particularly good. But I'll take what I can get. I took the two mismatched uh, 525 covers, they didn't fit the case, so I glued them together, added some uh, standoffs so I can screw in the LCD and uh, the PCP with the buttons. It is assembled and ready to go into the PC. Because these 525 bays are not made for this case, I had to glue them in first. It's time to fire it up and see if everything is working. I would like to do a quick code review here. Uh, here we have our ADC pins. The Pico has three of them. This is uh, for the example code I borrowed to actually read the NTC thermistor. So the Steinharsch constant is here, for example. Then we got uh, the PVM duty cycle for the first frame here, pin 16 on that one. We got the duty cycle of uh, 25 kHz and we're setting it to, to like the highest. 65,535 because it's a 16 bit value and it reads in this the fans gonna run at full speed, sort of run at full speed. And we have that for both fans. Pump is uh, always on 12 volt. And these are our buttons that are connected to pin 13 and 15. And this is for the code for the uh, LCD. You have to define the columns, so how many letters and numbers and so on there are per row. 
and the number of rows. So we got 20 by 4. So we're using Adafruit Circuit Python Char LCD here. I will include a link in the description, but that's what we're using to control the LCD more or less and some other things. Uh, we need to install so, uh, Blink and libraries. Uh, and here's a guide, I will also link that. I did find that uh, in Tony you can install uh, Vanish packages. You can search and install, but it didn't install uh, all that I wanted with those packages. You just did a partial install, so it was kind of annoying. So I had to make my own library pack that way. But that's what, what uh, we're using here, the LCD library. And it's only using the last four bits, so we're defining them here. And then we have the enable bit here and the... Uh, uh, that's for the register select basically. So we have the GP pins here on the that correspond to the Pico. And for the fans, we're using IRQ interrupts. So that's what we're setting up here for the first fan. We got one for each fan. So we got interrupt flag one for fan one, which is the radius fan. We're using pin 14 for the fan. The other two fans are here. And these are time ticks because we don't have a real time clock. We need to keep track of the time. So this is. Uh, basically the time between interrupts on the different fans, so this is time 1, time 2, time 3, one for each fan. I also did add a factory set because I do save the fan settings and if you push one of the buttons while powering up the Pico, it will uh, remove those files. Also each button has an own file for simplicity and it will check for the existence of the file and if it, it doesn't exist it will create it. And here we have the different labels, so if you want to use this code and rename, say, radiator to something else, this is where you change that, and you've got the second fan, case fan there, and here's the pump. And this is temp for temperature, you might want to change that if you have a different language. These are just the dividers between uh, the voltages and, say, the temperature, you can change that to some other symbol if you want. So here we're just opening the files for the fans, so we can read the fan speed uh, and set the fans accordingly. So now we're actually into the main loop here, that's where everything goes around and around forever. So this is the code for the first fan, and we have, this is for actually reading the RPM, so we have three instances of this code here, and it's interrupt based, so that's why I have three of them. And essentially if an interrupt is detected, it will uh, set uh, this variable dt1 to time ticks in microsecond, seconds minus t1, which we said set before, but that will also be set down here again. So, so basically, we measure the time differences here between the interrupts, so we actually know how long that is. If we, and we know that the fan will do one revolution for every two uh, RPM signals, so effectively every two interrupts. So that's uh, why we have some code here. Also, we're checking that the pulse isn't too short here. So you might have to tweak this if you have very high RPM fans, like stupidly high, you might have to lower this. If you have very low RPM, you could high, uh, increase it if you want. But I left it at 3, seems to work up to at least 6000 RPM. And we're doing a couple of loops here, that's loops plus 1. The thing is though, time ticks by itself is apparently not accurate. It's a 32-bit value, I don't remember if, in, if it's an integer or float, but it Basically, when you get to the highest value you can get, it rolls over and starts over. So it's quite buggy. So you kind of want to get back to this part of the code as soon as you can. So you don't want a, a sleep command, not even sleep, like 0 0.1 is gonna completely screw that up. You don't want sleep, that's also why I'm doing counters where I skip some code for a while. So I had a lot of problem with uh, time ticks to replace uh, the real time clock. But essentially this is the code I intended to use until I realized it doesn't work on a Pico. So it's similar but I had to rewrite it. So we got two instances of that. I'm also skipping the first two readings. I might have said that. Uh, depends sometimes. Depends on the code and the timing. Sometimes that's not an issue. But sometimes I get very weird readings like very high. So I skip two of those. But I'm doing eight readings. And the last six ones I add up and then divide by six here in this loop here and then we reset the loop basically. And that's how that works because uh, if you don't average a few of them together you're gonna get very sporadic like RPMs. And here is the NTC Tervisto code I borrowed more or less. So here is the guide for that I'm gonna post it in the description. Uh, this is the guide I used, it explains a bit, has some example code. So what I did have to make a few changes, I added this counter here. So basically we're counting up to 50,000 and when we get to 50,000 we run the code. 
So the main loop will pass this code by almost 50,000 times before it runs it. And at the bottom where I set the counter when we run it, and yeah. But every time we don't run it, it basically add plus one. So, and the reason for that is this code sucks a lot of CPU. I noticed like it's really heavy. And I think it's because Python is an interpret language and we're doing a lot of math. So the Steinhardt equation here, for example. So I had to add this code here. So basically if v in minus v out, if that equals zero, we're not gonna run this code here. Because the problem with that is you cannot divide by zero in Python. That will basically crash code. You're not allowed to do that. And we can see here that he, he was dividing, taking v in minus v out uh, and dividing um, v out times uh, r a, I think it says there, so dividing there. And I noticed uh, when uh, this equals zero, the code crashed. So you can maybe simulate it the way I did, but if you pulled out the thermistor, I think, and put it back again, it would crash. Because at some point it would figure out that this was basically zero. So I added this piece of code here to remove this bug or crash behavior. So I added this piece of code just in case you do unplug the thermistor or it would come loose for some reason. And why have the fan controller crash for that? And here we are shooting for button presses. So button one. Depending on uh, when we push it, we're basically toggling up uh, in the speed settings here from 1 to 12. So 1 to 8 are manuals, 9 to 12 are the automatic ones. We can actually see that here. So we are setting that and we're writing the changes to the files that will remember that. We're also changing the LCD that's updated separately from the rest of the LCD when it comes to RPM voltages, things like that. Just so it's more responsive. And we do the same for the second button, same code just changed for button number two. Here we have the manual speed profiles and they're quite simple. They're basically whatever speed setting you set, like one, two, three, up to eight. And that equals a duty cycle. It's uh, very simple. And we do the same for both fans. So now we're getting to the automatic fan control, LCD and other stuff. So we're also doing a counter up to 20,000. So we only run this code uh, once every 20,000 cycles of the main loop and like I said I want to skip any kind of sleep because of the how we measured RPM that's gonna otherwise we won't get any useful readings I couldn't and I really don't like sleep because the, you're not using the hardware then it's just sitting there basically before we update the LCD we're checking the voltage dividers the 12 volt and the 5 volt it works the same as the thermistor but much simpler because we have no weird equations here are automatic fan profiles. So we're actually first checking that the first fan here is actually running. If it's not, we're not run, not setting it with this. And here we're checking if, sp if speed equals 9, which is the first automatic setting. The last one is 12. And this, this is also stupid simple. I did try some equations and so on, and it does work. I can use something like that. But uh, I decided to go for basically steps so when you're hitting a threshold you go to the next fan speed so we're getting into the automatic speed control and temperature sensor uh, code here we're basically setting the rpm according to the temperature here so first we're going to check if the fan is running before we set any duty cycle and that's to make sure that the fan is actually running we check what if the speed profile is set to a 9 which is the first automatic one and if it is then we can check the temperature and set the duty cycle accordingly. So it basically checks the temperature, for example, above 26, but below 30. Then we're gonna set duty cycle 5500. And this basically repeats for all the profiles and all the fans. Down here, we got some uh, debug code that will show up down here. Here is the code for printing out uh, the first fans RPM, so the radiant fan in my case. We have a few bits of code here. It basically checks if RPM is equal or greater than 1000, but less than 10,000. And the, the less part is kind of important because you can get the erroneous values over 9,999. So we don't want to write that because it just messes up this, the LCD. And then we have to, if it's less than 1000, uh, you, you don't want the number one to be left on the LCD. You have to run some code to clean that up. If it's less than 1000, so 999 equal to that or less, it actually writes out that with a space in front of it. So this part here is where the actual RPM goes and it prints the RPM behind. And the same thing here, if it equal or less than zero, so we get some weird negative number for some reason. Basically always write, writes out zero RPM here and also added some spaces there just to 
write over any previous uh, printouts the two previous lines might have made and this basically repeats for both the other two fans and th th this is for the NTC transistor and it works basically the same as the fans so you have like a range of uh, if it's 10 or less than 100 so basically 10 centigrade after 99 this code runs here and it prints that out if it's less than 10 but equal greater than 0 it prints this if it's less than uh, zero, it prints, uh, I think, 0, 0.0 all the time. It just uh, start intending ne negative values, and uh, I don't see the point. Uh, if you want that, you can obviously change this however you want. And uh, here we're writing out the 12 volt and the 5 volt. So the 12 volt also has two lines because we've got two digits uh, and a decimal. 5 volt, we only got the, the one digit with the decimal, so we actually don't have to make some kind of case for if the voltage is below some, some value. And the way I see, I haven't put in some weird, like, if the voltage is zero or negative, uh, you know, do this or that. Because if this actually connects to a computer and your voltage just starts to drop way too much, you're gonna crash out anyway, your whole computer will probably shut down. So it's kind of pointless trying to make code for a scenario that your computer cannot deal with anyway. And uh, I mentioned before that if uh, the fans weren't running, it wouldn't set one of the profiles that you selected. The reason for that is that it will, down here, then if it realizes the fans are at zero RPM, it will apply 12 volts to the outputs and uh, the fan connector. So if you measure them with no fan, it's gonna be 12 volts there. And this is to try to start up a fan that might not start at, say, the, the, the one, uh, the lowest speed setting or the any of the lower ones, for example. Or if you disconnect one that might might run at the lowest but not start at it, for example. So this this is kind of like a fail safe for that. Um, it can with some some notice some cases with some fans that really want high voltage run like nine volt. They can kind of like ramp up and then down again. At least with my older code, I have not checked with those fans how they act now. But uh, every time I tried now, at least the fans are always running and starting up. So basically you get 12 volts to the fan until it records an RPM with a failsafe. And down here it's just resetting a lot of stuff back to zero before it starts the whole loop over again. I think it's time to wrap this up. But if you want to get in uh, using the Pika, you could visit this site I have. And uh, I suggest doing the tutorials, the basics here. You can also visit this site here for some LCD examples. That's where I got some of the testing code I ran initially. I have put together this uh, fan controller pack. It contains the code, uh, different examples either that I found. They're usually based on something I found that I modified. And uh, this is the actual main program they were running on the, the Pico. So if you want to run that automatically on yours, you just rename it to main and upload it to the Pi. And you can also, you also have to put this lib folder on the Pi if you don't want to like put that together yourself. At the time of making, uh, this was the latest versions of the libraries needed, the fruit libraries. But yeah, the, that's just a queen and drop in. So you can drop that in and you can drop this in called main.py and it's gonna do what mine is doing. I got some uh, circuit diagrams and stuff here. So I kind of did uh, multiples. So we have, uh, we have a fan control here as a PDF. That's the whole thing. So here is your fans. Here are the transistors. Voltage dividers. LCD. The Pico. Uh, Triplified timer. Uh, there is a problem though with my design that I forgot. Uh, the Pico itself has a diode, so whatever 5 volt you apply here doesn't go out through the USB port that sits here. The problem is I should have a diode around here too. So whatever voltage comes in for 5 volt on the USB doesn't go out to the 5 volt here because then it goes out on the PSU. So when I had a power supply connected, the fan actually started running due to that. Uh, so yeah, you could probably add just a diode here to make sure that uh, the USB voltage cannot go out on pin 39 and to the 5 volt here. But uh, when I designed the thing, I never planned to have the USB cable hooked up to the Pico when the, when the fan controller is built and installed into the computer. So if I have to update the firmware, I just had to unplug the floppy connector we added 
and then we have uh, these ones to help you like visualize it and build it you might want to like design a proper pcb for pcb and send off the pcb way or something or you might have some different pcb you're putting it on but this is what i used and uh, there's also one like mirrored i would recommend if you buy an lcd that you get one that doesn't require negative voltage like mine did because then you can use ground on pin 3 instead and don't have to cobble together something that gives you negative voltage so we can skip this whole part here you can obviously build the fan controller i built uh, but i would recommend uh, that you try to improve it both the software and hardware there is a lot of things we could improve on the fan controller i was thinking uh, using adc pins uh, to measure the voltage so you set the, an actual voltage instead as it is now it's kind of dumb it just set a duty cycle so the voltage the fan gets depends on the current draw of the fan. Uh, you could also, just in software, I could also fix that by essentially running the fan at full duty cycle, record the RPM, and then uh, make fractions of that for each fan, pro fan setting. So like fan setting one, uh, MS1 could be 50%, so half of, say, 1800 that my 120 millimeter fan runs at. So we could use the RPM as a feedback. Or we could add, uh, we could add our ships. You can add, so you can break out the ADC pins. You can get more ADC pins, more more or less, and you control those with some extra general purpose pins. There are ships for that. Uh, most stores that sells like the Pico have ships like that. I don't remember the name of them. I never bought any, but there are around uh, half a euro or something. They're very cheap. And another thing I would like to fix is so that fans run by default and the PVM signal and the duty cycle is essentially reversed or inverted. So the fan is always on and then you turn it off by applying a signal. As it is now, it's not... If the fan controller breaks and doesn't start up, your fan doesn't start, so that's kind of dumb. So there are a few things that could be improved. So if you decide to build the fan controller, build or do a spin-off or something, I do not take any responsibility for any damage it might cause to your system or anything else. It's, uh, this is just a DIY product I made because I wanted to do something and I think the Pico for 6 euros was a lot of fun. I think that's it for this time, so thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainland.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.